of inspiration and mentoring that you know I think uh, is very important for our students today. And UTSA, what's happening there? UTSA, I, I taught UTSA's first traditional mural, first mural painting course. It was a summer practicum in, in 2005, I believe, and uh, it was uh, in preparation for an exhibit called uh, Contemporary Wall Painters, uh, curated by Francis Culpit. And uh, I worked there on site at the main campus for the whole summer <laughs> with uh, a crew of uh, UTSA MFA and BFA students. And their, their class was just to work with me on this large scale mural. It's 12, 12 feet high by uh, 18 feet wide, and it's called uh, El Callejero. And I think there's a, a slide of it later on, but you see the students working on the underpainting here. Uh, I think it'll come up later on. Um, so this is El Corazon. It's uh, acrylic on panel. And uh, uh, I, was, I started kind of moving away from the figurative, the narrative of you know, uh, community members or friends and family or, or figures that I've kind of encountered along the way. And I started uh, investigating a lot more spiritual iconography you know, at this point. And uh, I dissected the human heart. You know? So I did a series of heart uh, uh, icons or vessels. And uh, in this case, there's, it's kind of set up like a medical illustration and each number corresponds to a, a, a quote about what spirit means to, you know, all these spiritual leaders. I asked priests and Native American mm. healers and, and spiritualists what they, they felt spirit, uh, what the word spirit meant. Uh, this piece uh, is now in the collection of Ray Santisteban. Mm -hmm. And I was really happy uh, that Ray loved this piece because I traded this painting for my Falcon, my, my 65 Falcon. I was like, all right, Ray. And did you come away with a definition of spirit? I did. I think uh, uh, that was this painting was the first time that I really started investigating so, so many different how you, cultures how and definitions. Define spirit? Yeah, I, the first time that I really felt something like that was on the scaffolding at the San Fernando Cathedral. I think it was uh, uh, almost like a, an awakening. It was uh, something that was just coming through naturally. Was guiding my hand almost, you know, to paint in this style, and I've never, you know, painted differently. Um, it that was like a spiritual awakening almost, you know, through the art, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, and of course, growing up um, Catholic, um, you know, with my mother and and her idea of of spiritualism, I think uh, my my current series of work is really moving in that direction. And we'll get there if we keep moving. We need to keep moving yeah, swiftly. Yeah. So tell us about this one. This is the Lechuza, one of the, the, my favorites. Um, uh, growing up with the stories of the Lechuza, of course, from my mom. And, and what my is aunt. the Lechuza? The Lechuza the is actually, uh, 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 she's described as a large bird, or a large bird with the head of a female figure or the body of a female figure. Uh, but to me, she's an omen. You know, she is, uh, she's really misunderstood. Nowadays, uh, young people think she's uh, evil or she's a witch. Mm. And I'm like, well, actually, you know, it's a bird totem. It's an animal spirit, you know, here to kind of warn us, you know. But those are, those are the things that, you know, I've been investigating over a while. And, and it started with uh, this uh, piece in 2001. She traveled the nation with the Chicano visions that opened up here in the San Antonio Museum of Art. Mm -hmm. And it, it had an eight-year-run eight run tour of the nation. Los Borrachos, uh, 2001, same idea. And Los Borrachos means? The, the Borrachos, the drunks. Okay. And uh, graphite on paper. Chichos also owns this piece. Uh, but uh, every now and then, I, I like to go back to that, you know. Uh, uh, Your roots. Uh, my roots, yes, <laughs> definitely. Okay. So here's now here that. you introduced a new image. These are these two other hearts. Uh, Rafael and Sandra Guerra own the uh, image on the, the left-hand side, which is called One. And uh, acrylic on canvas. Uh, I did a series of hearts. Every year I would do a heart, you know, a spiritual heart. Uh, the, the image on the right-hand side is called Trust. So these are hearts that are filled with greed, almost, you know. It's that they always say that the, your heart is filled with greed or hate or anger. So I started investigating that this muscle as, as containing all these emotions. You know? Now, are so you referencing the dollar bill here? This is the dollar mm -hmm. bill, yeah, yes. images in the dollar bill. So 
of a heart filled with greed. Okay. This is uh, El Prendido, uh, which is a play on words because he's lighting up a bowl, uh, he's smoking a pipe, and he has a, a lighter in his hand, so uh, he's lighting that up. He's pretty lit, you know, by this time. Uh, mm -hmm. Another friend of mine, uh, these are real people in real places, you know, other than the, you know, the, 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 um, the kind of supernatural characters that I do or the heart series. Mm -hmm. uh, graphite on paper, uh, 2004. It's a lot er, uh, earlier work. Drawings, I, I love drawings, so I keep going back to that. And you're doing a lot now, as we'll quite see. Quite a bit of drawings, quite yeah. a bit. And this was the drawing for uh, the study for the Callejero mural that I did at UTSA. Uh, 2005, it's a small drawing. Actually, it's, it's tiny compared to my other stuff. But uh, it's based on an actual raspa truck that passed through my neighborhood, you know. This guy, uh, the raspero, the, the snow cone cart uh, truck would mm -hmm. come by and he hand lettered El Callejero on his truck. And I go, man, that's cool, you know, do you mind if I paint your truck? He goes, oh yeah, just give me a copy, give me a copia, he says. So I did a lithograph of this at UTSA, I did the mural. Mm -hmm. Plus, while I was there, I, I did a residency and did uh, my first lithograph there in the print shop under uh, printmaster Neil Cox. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, amazing piece, and sure enough, I have a lithograph and, and uh, um, you know, of this piece. So uh, it's cruising around the west side uh, on this truck somewhere, you know. Let's look at the grand version yeah. of this. That's the acrylic on canvas version. It's uh, 12 by 18 feet, uh, assisted by uh, MFAs and BFAs from uh, UTSA. Yeah, and this is also in the collection of Joe Diaz. Can you t maybe tell us a little bit about some of the details? The, the image itself, like I said, is, is from you know, the neighborhood. It's parked on uh, Chupadera Street, which is down Guadalupe. There's a and sort of bent traffic light there. Yeah, it, and the style at this point has become very loose. It's become almost very exaggerated and elongated, you know. Uh, but the narrative is a lot, uh, 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 I have a lot more fun with narrative because it's parked at the school crossing zone and it's a, it's a, a raspa truck, so it's a low rider raspa truck. So all the raspas and the candies have fallen off the back of the truck and it's parked at a, at a school crossing zone. His license plate uh, states, too slow for you, you know? <laughs> so uh, a lot of fun with the, with the image. And of course, the four horsemen that's on view here. Four horsemen. In San Antonio uh, Clark's one, contemporary. Uh, I know it's very heavy on iconography. You want to kind of run through it with, just with brief real, brevity? Yeah. Just really quickly, because yeah. this is a, a, a classic story. It's a literary translation from the Book of Revelations, uh, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And uh, like I said, that spiritual uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, icon still come through. Uh, the image is beginning from left to right is pestilence, famine, war, and death. And this is on exhibit in the gallery. Uh, the, the, there are separate panels, so there are eight panels in the series. The head panel has a crown above each figure. Uh, above each figure, there's a crown of like the gifts that uh, uh, God has given to human beings. So these are actually just human beings that were elevated to uh, a sainthood or saint level. You know, uh, so pestilence above his head has a crown of uh, healing herbs, and uh, there's this bird motif that went above that in the headpiece, and that's, uh, during that time I painted it was the avian bird flu, so I painted this small sparrow, you know, in disease. The second piece is uh, a famine, and he's, he's, he's uh, pictured without a jaw, and his crown is a, a collection of fruit-bearing plants, and the bird motif about him is the uh, vulture, uh, kind of symbolizing that you know famine, that desert, desolence. The next panel over is war, and uh, his crown, he's depicted with a sword, of course, and his crown is the olive branch, which is traditional symbol for peace. Uh, and above his head is a war eagle that's used by warlike nations. The last panel is death, and above his crown is a, a collection of white lilies and the skeleton of that same uh, bird afflicted by uh, the avian bird flu. So, very classical piece, I think. And, and, uh, and people can see it in person and really yes, observe yes. Uh, the texture, which is very important. And, and I also have a CD. Yes, I was gonna say. 
there's a music component that goes to the painting, and uh, I worked with Phil Luna on this this four piece movement to the p to the painting that was uh, uh, originally uh, produced for the Oppenheimer Collection Room at the McNay, and Phil came in with his orchestra. And it just blew us away. It was amazing. Uh, uh, all instrumental classical pieces. And our visitors can listen in the head, with the headphones There's that headphones we have in the gallery. There. So you can mm, listen to definitely. the entire uh, musical Phil composition. Phil is, is a, a, an amazing composer. And, and also, I just want to put, you, met, you forgot to mention, the, um, your imagery was inspired in part by the old master paintings at the McNay, correct? At the, in the Oppenheimer collection. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. The, so, you know, I was going back and forth between like these real kind of spiritual images and my barrio works. So this series is still called Barrio Works. It's a series of lowriders, their drawings in, and their studies for, you know, the paintings. Uh, this is, uh, the image on the left is Pura Raspa, uh, 2004. And uh, Raspa is a snow cone, so my neighbor had a snow cone cart. And uh, I was like, wow, this is cool. If I had a snow cone cart, I'd like totally, you know, customize it. So the drawing is like the snow cone cart customized with lowrider bike fixtures. Mm -hmm. And the paleta cart also has that kind of lowrider feel to it. The, the Chalupa Compuesta is a lowrider taco trailer of Zazamora. Now you see them everywhere. Uh, graphite on paper, uh, lowrider uh, barrio series, it's called. Uh, these are the paintings, actually, based on the original drawings. These were also in the psychedelic uh, mm -hmm. show here at SAMA. And uh, Gil Cardenas wound up uh, collecting these pieces and was very happy that, you know, he, he really loved these, these works. And acrylic on canvas, a pretty large scale, um, Pura Raspa series. And this is uh, Street Altar, Street Altar. And um, um, it's in homage to, you know, uh, people that had passed away in my neighborhood, that had died in, in my neighborhood. So the vela or the candle is that kind of uh, homage to, to these guys that, you know, I grew up with and passed away due to drug addiction, uh, which is symbolized by the beer bottle and, uh, uh, or alcoholism, I'm sorry, and uh, drug addiction, which is symbolized by the Krylon spray can. At, when I was growing up in the neighborhood, it was all about spray sniffing. Mm. So a lot of people just lost their lives due mm. to that addiction, prison, mm. domestic violence, or gang violence. So mm. that, that's what that's called, street altar. And then another opportunity came your yeah, way. Yeah, uh, thank God for Art Pace. I, I love Art Pace. Uh, they uh, uh, was selected for um, a residency in 2007, mm -hmm. and this uh, installation is called uh, El Carreton, which is also based on a drawing of a shopping cart that I did during that Barrio series uh, mm -hmm. uh, draw works on paper. So you had a chance to translate that into an installation. A, a great experience because, you know, I think that's, that's the next step, you know, uh, uh, you know, moving out into space, moving out into installation, uh, working with alternative materials, learning about welding, which was fun. And you had some other artists helping you with part of that? I had several artists. I had seven artists help me on my installation. I had uh, Chispas, uh, 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 Luis uh, uh, Guerrero, mm -hmm. and uh, as a welder, he, we welded the actual shopping cart, which is like 10 feet high by mm -hmm. uh, 8 feet deep and 6 feet wide, something like that. It's massive. And uh, Sheck, uh, uh, David Vega, who mm -hmm. uh, worked on the graffiti that's in the background behind the uh, the shopping cart. Uh, Rudy Galindo helped me with the uh, actual building uh, facade that I had designed. There's there's uh, Sheck's work. Uh, Kathy uh, uh, Cunningham uh, Little uh, has the uh, the neon piece right in the center of that graffiti work, which was great. I I I, I hadn't seen that. Uh, I really like the way the neon work with, with uh, the graffiti and so that did, piece. So did the Art Pace experience um, change your life in any way? I, 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 uh, I'm definitely, uh, the first time when I went to Europe on the Art Pace grant, you know, I was really excited to see what I could do with materials and, and how I can work with the space. So uh, I also did a video uh, with uh, me, uh, Manuel uh, Solis and we, sh we went out, we went into the west side and we shot an old uh, uh, tire shop, you know, the day in the life of a tire shop. Mm -hmm. And uh, Phil Luna 
did the score mm -hmm. to that film. And uh, uh, it's been entered in several film festivals and mm -hmm. stuff. Really cool piece, you know. So I started branching out into me, uh, mixed uh, multimedia mm -hmm. at that point. Portrait of Vincent Valdez. Uh, uh, you large had a show scale. together around this time, right? Yeah, we did. And, and uh, this was for a show at the Museo La Meda. And uh, it was called San Anto. And uh, one of my favorite shows, because uh, uh, we were actually able to bring together all these stories, you know, growing up in, in uh, And you grew up on different, side different parts of town. Side yeah. of San Antonio, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, I did this portrait of him. It's a pretty large scale acrylic on canvas. And he did one of me, a very beautiful classic portrait of me. And uh, uh, we traded the paintings. Mm -hmm. So we, we both own these pieces, you know. And uh, during that time at the, uh, at the Alameda, we were able to work together in, in the studio that was provided by the museum. And we um, uh, worked with uh, students from our old high schools. Vince worked with Burbank students, and I went back to Kennedy mm -hmm. and worked with those guys. So we worked with them he, right downtown. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. And this diptych, this was a sort of departure for you, these monochromatic very monochromatic red paintings. Yeah, uh, large scale. I think uh, I, I was trained as a large scale painter, so over the years I just can't get that out of my system. I love these large paintings. Uh, this was also inspired by a literary translation of the, uh, the Book of Revelations. This is uh, called uh, Return of the Locust. In the book, uh, which is uh, Revelations 9, 7 through 9, 11, uh, it describes this locust returning to earth and the prophet saying, when you see this monster, uh, uh, on the earth, that's time to really, you know, kind of worry. But uh, <laughs> just really quick symbolism. Uh, the locust is described with uh, the face of man, the head of a horse, uh, hair of woman, the body of iron. Um, it shoots sting. It shoots uh, uh, flames from its stingers, and um, uh, a crown on its head. And the wings sound like uh, the beat of a thousand chariots flying into battle. Well, the opposite icon or image is the Apache helicopter, which is, has the head of a horse, which is the, the, um, the air cavalry symbol, which is the head of a horse, the face of man, the hair of women, men and women fly these machines, the body of iron, it shoots flames from its stinger missiles, the crown on its head, and its wings sound like the beat of a thousand chariots flying into battle. So I've, I've been finding those really eerie, you know, similarities in, in this, this, this book, you know, that I've been studying. So uh, kind of freaky, kind of scary, but um, I think hopefully one day very timeless. Mm. The Ojo de Dios, acrylic on canvas, 2009. Uh, at this point, my style is getting a lot... A lot more abstract. A lot more abstract. But, but you're referencing the eye that you used in the... Um, in the Heart years series. earlier in the Heart mm -hmm. series with the yeah, dollar bill. Yeah, I think because, the, you know, because that, that uh, whole idea of the all-seeing eye you know, of God that uh, you know, everyone carries around in their pocket uh, on the dollar bill. The dollar bill is, is in my opinion, you know, one of the most popular talismans that we have in our <laughs> pockets, in our wallets. So I think that's where you know, this eye uh, design keeps popping up in my work. Uh, La Mano, the same idea. Uh, the, the hand as being a, a symbol of power. Um, um, and this was also one of those uh, medical illustrations. Each one of the little points on the hand uh, describes a certain quote from whether it's a, a judge or a lawyer or a priest, all these, these people that have like this amazing wisdom. I'm, I'm always seeking that, that, uh, that wisdom and I incorporate it in, in, in the paintings. So this is more or less a symbol for a lot of different kinds of power? Different, yeah, it's a power structure. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. And then of course, continuing with my uh, community work, uh, during my studio time, I have to find a time to balance my studio with uh, my day job or my community work. And uh, I'm, I'm currently working with the uh, Blue Star Contemporary Art Center. I'm mm -hmm. very proud mm -hmm. uh, to, to say this tonight because uh, I have all my students here. And uh, uh, hopefully later on, you know, you guys can meet them. But uh, this is a very important piece. This was a portrait of Chuck Ramirez. It's 2011. Uh, it was a collaboration with Blue Star and the uh, Stone Metal Press Organization. And uh, we were charged with doing this three by four piece of plywood. And we 
carved it out with a router saw that we bought from Home Depot. And uh, I had several students, you can see the, uh, the right hand upper image, uh, these students are here tonight, uh, that uh, assisted me on the cutting of this plate. You can see down below that, you see John and Cree, you know, carving into the background. Uh, and in the cent three center images, you see the rest of the students helping print this, this image. Very uh, uh, important figure in, in our life, I, this I was, believe. This was made shortly after Chuck's untimely yes. death. Yes, yes, yeah. So, and Chuck was so cool. Uh, you know, he would come in to uh, talk to our students. He did workshops with us, and, mm -hmm. and uh, we went to several of his exhibits. Uh, uh, so the students are very familiar with uh, Chuck's work, you know. So um, the piece is new acquisition here at SAMA. Yes, thanks to the generosity of Michael McGowan, the donor, and Thank it you. can be seen Thank up you. on the second floor in the yeah, contemporary Yeah, definitely. Galleries. So uh, we came to the unveiling or the, the opening of the new acquisitions work, and, and we're really proud, you know, to be able to, to share that with you guys. And then finally, some new things you're working on. New drawings. Uh, Vince and I uh, uh, received a fellowship to go to the uh, Vermont Studio Center up in Vermont. It was cold, it was freezing, but uh, that's all, you know, we couldn't even hang out outside, so it was, in a way it was great because we got to work, and uh, I, I really needed the time to think. You know, I have so, many, so much work here in San Antonio. This month away uh, uh, from, uh, you know, just everything, uh, gave me time to really kind of focus on these new series of drawings. So these drawings were designed in Vermont. And uh, um, the image on the left is Mano de Dios, the hand of God, and um, graphite you, on paper. You fused the two images, the, the, the eye and the, yeah, and the hand. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think uh, uh, it's, a, it's a great direction. I'm, I'm very fascinated with, with this icon and, and its symbolism. And of course, you know, there are traditional symbols of the veladora, which means the candles. And uh, each symbol on those candles are, are based on, you know, a type of philosophy. Yeah, and uh, uh, it's a large-scale drawing. It's on exhibit at the Southwest School of Art. Currently. And currently on exhibit, mm -hmm. yes. Um, and the drawings are very important to me. I'm, I'm focusing on drawing right now because uh, I was invited to have a solo exhibition in uh, Bratislava, Slovakia. Uh, that's where the Diablito and the, the, the uh, spider uh, sold and and was was uh, now they want to well see more. <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> they sure do. So more. May 2013, I'm going to be going up there for an exhibit How and fabulous. a lecture at the at their university and a uh, 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 visiting artist uh, pr uh, piece. So that's terrific. And yeah, then you I'm have really one, one other new venture we thought we'd share tonight. Our gallery. So this we had just celebrated our one year anniversary at our gallery. Uh, and uh, our gallery is? Our gallery is uh, Alex Rubio and uh, Roland Fuentes, uh, the night rocker, uh, my business partner. And uh, we opened up this gallery, you know, um, it's been going great all year. We've had amazing artists here. The lower uh, left-hand side, you see uh, an exhibit we, that is up on the wall right now. It's currently on exhibit. Uh, it's called uh, NG5. Uh, I've curated the Nueva Generacion uh, for the past five years, which is an emerging artist exhibit, NG5. And uh, I have on the wall three uh, students from, uh, um, actually two from my class at Blue Star, that's Cree Viegas and Rose uh, Vote, and three uh, other female artists from UTSA, MFAs and BFAs. Mm -hmm. So it was, a great, it was a great mix, you know, to see uh, three female high school and three female university students on the wall, you know, so. So there's so many ways that you really function as a mentor in the past and in the present, and now with the art gallery, you're providing yet another opportunity for young artists to get their work out into the community and hopefully to develop patronage and really continue the growth of contemporary art in San Antonio. Very proud, very proud. Yeah, well done, Alex, well done. Thank you so much. <laughs> Let's, um, if we could have the lights, lights turned on, we'd like to give uh, members of the audience a chance to pose some questions. We have a roving microphone, so please, uh, wait for the microphone before you ask the question so that it will be audible in our video. So uh, raise your hand, please, if you have a question for Alex. <laughs> 
Any questions from the audience? Okay, we have one. Uh, uh, you want to pass the microphone down to the other side there? Over on the right. On my right, I should say. How is it Is this on? Yes. yes. I just wanted to say congratulations. I didn't realize you were so prolific. I uh, basically came to see you because uh, some of the kids were really interested in your, uh, uh, what is it, the steamroller Oh, the steamroller print, yeah, the, the <laughs> Chuck Ramirez print. By Chuck, I'm a docent, and the kids really like that. Great. And also, where is the art gallery? Well, the, the steamroller print was uh, uh, one of our favorites, and I'd like to take just a real quick minute to uh, introduce my students from Blue Star. If you guys could just stand up just for a minute, and please. <laughs> Josh, stand up. Stand up. <laughs> Thank you, guys. These guys are, um, um, they're, I'm, I'm just very proud of them, but um, they're uh, uh, working hard. We are currently uh, working on, just on Steve.